Hi there, welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, web comics, zines, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm answering a question from Finn O'Sullivan at FO underscore draws on Twitter. They ask, I always get confused on what the difference between a zine and a comic is. Could you explain that in the video? So this is a really fun question that I'm excited to answer. Uh, it's not a difficult question to answer, but I can see how a lot of people might not be familiar with zines. Um, so let's get started. So a zine is simply a self-printed, self-published book of any size, any kind of paper, any kind of folding. It can be a single paper folded into multiple pages. It can be multiple pages folded in half and stapled together or bound together some other way like with string. The best thing, the thing that I love the most about zines is that there are no rules. You can put whatever you want in your zine. You can be as creative as you want because you're making it all yourself and you're distributing it yourself through your friends or through people that you met in a zine club or you know if you go to a zine fest which are all around the country and the world, you can sell your zines there or trade your zines. So another really big thing about zines is the zine community. Um, so it's really kind of this living entity of all these people making zines and sharing them with one another. Um, so that's what I, I really love about zines. It's a really interesting, inspiring way to meet all sorts of artists. But a zine can have whatever you want in it. There are photography zines, so someone who loves taking photos and wants to share their photos in a book form can make a zine of their photos. You can have a poetry zine where you collect all of your poetry into one book. You can do short stories. You can do an anthology where you get a bunch of people to submit their work and publish it all in, in one zine. Um, and of course you can put comics in a zine. Um, so it's a really nice way to self-publish your own comic without having to spend too much money to do it because you know, traditionally zines are just printed out on a Xerox copying machine or your own home printer. Um, you can of course make it a little nicer. You can get a professionally printed zine, um, but there are really no rules. It's whatever you want it to be. The history of zines is really fascinating. There are, you know, there's this long history of punk zines and feminist zines, like zines that are used to spread um, ideas, you know, very politically charged zines. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the history of zines um, because I know that Chris of Zine Cuisine, um, who's another YouTuber, um, I think she's working on a video about the history of zines, so look out for that video. And just check out zine cuisine in general because you can learn so much about all sorts of different zines from Chris and her channel. It's really a cool channel. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, so definitely check out zine cuisine. I'll put her channel information below. So I want to share some of the zines that I've made myself. Um, I've done a bunch of different zines. Sometimes I have zines that I made and I sold out of them. Um, so I'm only showing you some that I still have left. Some I only have like a couple more left and I don't plan on reprinting them. Others I might reprint. Um, so it just depends on what the zine is. Um, when I first started out doing zines, I kind of stuck to the half page zines. It's really easy to fold an eight and a half by 11 size piece of paper, a regular piece of printer paper in half, and then staple it in the middle. 
Um, so that's like a really easy standard way people like to make zines. So here's one of my zines. Um, I illustrated a poem by Dante Gabriel Rossetti called Smithereens. He was a painter and poet in the Victorian era in England. Um, he, definitely check out his work, it's pretty interesting. He was part of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which was a group of painters. Um, so I decided to illustrate this one poem. So this is a full color zine, so it costs a little bit more to print. Um, but I think it turned out really great, and I've had a lot of compliments on it at different fests. Um, and especially people seem to like that I used thread to um, bind it instead of just staples. Um, I do staples mostly, but sometimes I, I'll do this thread. It's pretty simple. There are different ways to do that. Um, I think that Chris of Zine Cuisine might be doing some videos in the future, tutorials of how to do different folding and binding and different things to help you make your own zines. So definitely check out her channel. So this is one of my earlier zines, I would say. Um, I tried to make this a couple different ways, but this was the most successful version. This is another one of my half-page zines. Um, it's called Hello Blob. This is one of my characters. I did another book that was professionally printed of other Hello Blob illustrations. Um, this is kind of a parody of Hello Kitty. Um, since Hello Kitty doesn't have a mouth, so I took it even further. Hello Blob doesn't have a mouth or a nose or ears and only one eye, so it's a parody of Hello Kitty. Um, it's, you know, kind of strange and cute at the same time. Um, so this is another full color zine. Um, I really like how this one turned out. A lot of people were drawn to this. And I especially like I made a center fold. People get a kick out of that. So not only is it a book, but you could also potentially hang it up as a poster. This zine, Big Fish Eat Little Fish, is inspired by Peter Bruegel the Elder. His works, um, he has these strange fish with legs and different strange creatures in, in his works. So I kind of integrated that all into this story of these fish with legs. Um, so it's just kind of a silly, surreal story, um, full color, and a zine I thought was a really good way to get it off the internet and share it with people. I've shown these two zines in some of my previous videos. This is my graphic novel, Upon My Soul, about a sin eater named Lilith. So this one is volume one, and this is volume two. Um, you can see it's in grayscale. These I made smaller. I really, really like this size. It's basically just cutting a eight and a half by 11 regular size printer paper in half. Um, so I really love this format. I've been making zines this way and not so much the half page in recent years. This is my long arm stapler. It's really a perfect tool for making zines, zines of any size. Um, so sometimes your paper might be bigger than the end of a regular stapler, so you need more room to be able to staple it in the center. Um, so this is a really great tool to have. I think I bought this from one of my friends, um, but I'm sure you can go online and find it somewhere. Here's another really great tool to have. Um, it's just a simple bone folder. You can get one of these at pretty much any art store. I have a couple of these. Um, what you use this for is for folding your paper. It gives it a really crisp fold to it. Um, and it's just such a great tool to have, a simple tool. If you're gonna make your own zines, this tool is gonna make your life so much easier. So definitely get your hands on one of these. So traditionally zines are printed on Xerox copying machines or your own home printer. 
Um, I like to go to Office Depot. Their printers are far superior to my home printer, so I get a really good quality. My home printer tends to be kind of streaky, um, not very good quality images. So if you want your zine to look better, you might want to, you know, think about going to Office Depot or something like that to get your zines printed out. And then I, I fold and put them all together myself, staple them, um, so that saves you a little bit of money because if you really want to, you can have Office Depot do that for you, uh, but that kind of takes the fun out of, you know, assembling the zines yourself, so I highly recommend folding it all yourself and, you know, stapling it all yourself. That's kind of half the fun of doing a zine. I mentioned before, um, you know, one of the great things about zines is the zine community. Um, there are so many different zine fests. Um, because I'm in Maryland, I go to DC Zine Fest every year. I've been to San Francisco Zine Fest. Um, I've been to like different things like Small Press Expo, SPX. They have um, a lot of zines for sale there. Um, I usually table at SPX every year because it's in my neighborhood. Um, and there are a bunch of different really cool events all over the country. Like there's MICE, the Massachusetts Indie Comics Expo. There's CAKE, um, Chicago Alternative Comics Expo. So if you look online on just Google Zine Fest, I'm sure that something will pop up in your area, hopefully, or maybe you can drive an hour or two away and find a Zine Fest. And maybe even consider if there's not a Zine Fest in your area, maybe you can consider trying to put together your own Zine Fest. It's a really fun way to meet other artists and get your work out there. Having gone to so many different zine fests and alternative comics events, I've um, collected quite a number of zines from different people, either buying them or trading them. Um, so I wanted to show you guys some other people's zines. Um, so maybe this can inspire you, give you some ideas for your own zines. Here's an example of a one-page zine that's been folded into multiple pages. It makes a really cute teeny little zine that's easy to pass out to people, easy to print. Um, so this is called Critter Parable Zine by Patty Major. Um, I think she gave it to me at maybe Small Press Expo or DC Zine Fest, I'm not sure. Um, so it's really cool because it's just a black and white zine and just made with one page and it has a really cool effect to it. Um, so And it's pretty low cost to print a bunch of these and hand them out. So you might want to start off if you're making your first zine, this might be a good way to go. Here's another zine. I think I picked this up at small press expo i think we might have traded zines or it was a free zine um, but i wanted to show this this is birds by james hambone and i thought it was interesting because the cover is just construction paper um, which is a very interesting choice it has an interesting texture to it um, so that might inspire you when you're making your own zine but this is just a sketchbook zine so it's just a bunch of his bird drawings um it's not a story it's just a sketchbook but that's really cool these are really awesome drawings um so if you have a bunch of sketches or drawings and you want to share them in print that's a good way to do it is to make a sketchbook zine here's another zine this is by brendan monroe who's a really cool artist he does drawings and murals and sculptures. I think this is maybe one of the first scenes that I ever picked up, maybe around 2012. Um, I think I picked it up in Berkeley. There was a zine fest there. Um, so this is a really cool zine. It has a, these really big interesting images to it and not too many words to it. It's very abstract. Um, and I just find the use of um, negative space really fascinating. Um, so you can see how you can combine 
words and drawings, but it's not necessarily a traditional comic. But I would definitely put this in the category of comics. As I said, there are no rules to zines, so you don't have to do a traditional comic book zine. Um, you can do whatever style you want, whatever style fits well with the story that you're trying to tell. This is a zine by my friend Ryan Thompson. I think this is one of his earlier works. He's been selling for the past couple years more professionally printed, floppy comics of his work. Um, but I wanted to show this one because I think it has some really great features to it. Um, it has this beige kind of off-white cover and then it's white pages on in the interior. Um, the comic doesn't have much shading to it, but it has a lot of movement, which is really wonderful. Um, just that contrast of black and white is fascinating. Um, and so maybe you can learn something from this too, take away something for your own comic. This is a zine from my friend Rami Benson, uh, The Garden of Earthly Delight. He has a really interesting illustration style. It has a really interesting, unique style to it, which I really admire. Um, and this is, you know, very, very comic book-like. Um, but it has a lot of cool texture to it um, so this is something I find inspiring when I look at it. This is a zine by Joe Davidson. It's a little biography of Tiny Tim um, and it actually has a different story in the back so you can put two stories in one zine. I kind of like how they're upside down from one another um, but I just really love this little um, biography of Tiny Tim um, and it has some cool shading to it. I like how the backgrounds are kind of a dark gray and that really makes the white colors stick out. Um, here's the other story which is about a pigeon I guess um, and it has like Darwin and different things so this is a really cool zine as well. These are two zines by Shelby Criswell. They're a friend of mine. I've been following them online for a long time now. I think they do a zine every month, if I'm remembering correctly, as a reward for patrons on their Patreon account. Uh, so I kind of wanted to show these because even though it's the same artist, there are two very different styles going on. So this uh, lesbian cowboy western is very different from this kind of romantic almost Hollywood looking style of this one. I wanted to share this very cool zine Curry Angry by En Su Zhang. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm really bad with Korean um, but I just love her work. Um, she's battling all these stereotypes debunking stereotypes of Korean immigrants, Korean Americans, and East Asian Americans in general. Um, so she has a really important message in her work. It's all very funny and sarcastic. Um, and I just love the style of these. It's kind of like a stop motion animation, but in comic book form. Um, so she's, you know, created a doll and different props and then, um, you know, posed them and add words, thought bubbles, and dialogue bubbles to them. I supported this on Kickstarter because I just love it so much. Um, and here you can see her comics. Um, they're a little risque, but they're so funny. Um, and it's really an important message she has. This is a really cool, unique scene. I'm kind of obsessed with this scene called Songs About the Devil by Z. Akhmetova. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The scene, it's a full size eight and a half by 11 zine. Um, so you can go as big as this, maybe bigger if you really want to, but this is pretty big for a zine. Um, I just am in love with this like brown color that's kind of a sepia color all throughout the zine. Um, so there are two stories in this and they're just so detailed and interesting. The style is so unique um, and it's just 
a really cool size to get these big drawings printed. Um, it's just I find this really fascinating and inspiring. I hope I answered your question, Finn. So a zine is anything you want it to be, and it can be a comic book zine. I hope the different examples that I showed you all will help give you some cool ideas for your own zine. If you'd like me to answer your questions in a future episode, please reply with your question or tweet me your question at GE Gallus. That's G E G A L L A S. I look forward to reading your questions and answering them. Want to support this channel? Please click subscribe. It's free and it's just one easy click and then you'll get notified when I post a new episode so you can follow along as I explain how to do your own comics. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.